Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliet Lex here on YouTube. How's it going? What's going on? What's up? Uh, honestly, I know I've been gone for a long time and I just uploaded a vlog um, that was really, really short. I, it was intended to be a bit longer, but I have just been busy and I've been sick. I just uh, had a setback. Um, so it's been tough uh, mentally, physically. Um, but I'm in recovery right now, so yeah, why not sit down and do a video for you guys? And honestly, this isn't the first time I have tried to film this video uh, on the Umbrella Academy. Every time I sit down and film this review um, or just talk about the series, something always ends up happening, whether I get company or um, I get sick and I can't do it or I have a lot of work to do and I haven't had time. But uh, today's my day off and like I said I am recovering um, so why not come on here and review the Umbrella Academy and like the video states this is why I think the Umbrella Academy works so well um, and yeah let's go on and review this okay so the Umbrella Academy is a show on Netflix and is based on the Dark Horse comic by the same name, The Umbrella Academy. It is written by Gerard Way and illustrated by Gabriel Baugh. And yes, that Gerard Way, the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned. Um, so yeah, it is one hell of a ride. The show is based on the characters from the comic. With that being said, it is not a direct adaptation. As someone myself who has never um, read the comics. Uh, it is a breath of fresh air and and I've watched the show plenty of times and I gotta say it does have a rewatch value and yeah I really really enjoy it and I appreciate it for what it is. Now the show is not perfect it definitely has some issues but with that being said I think it's a really solid first season where you get to um, you know build this universe and to see these characters and yeah here's why I think it is amazing the show itself is a very insane concept and I think that everything that is revealed to the audience really does have a payoff at the end like everything comes in a full circle and you really do get to see these characters evolve as the episodes go by and you get to learn a little bit of everything from these characters you know there's about seven siblings and like a whole bunch of other side characters and of course some characters get more development and more time than the others but overall I feel like it's a good build-up and I know I have my notes here but it's a good build-up of these characters and you really get to learn a lot from all of them and they all kind of grow so at the end it's like a full circle and yeah there's a really good payoff and um, that's why I think it works very well you know they don't leave things hanging there's always you know, if they reveal something, there's always a payback or a payoff at the end. The show and the characters are very relatable. Sure, the characters are super humans and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of fantasy and, and sci-fi and stuff. And you'd be thinking, well, how is it relatable? Well, because I feel like the director and the writing really did ground these characters you know like they have these powers but in a sense they're just trying to cope with reality trying to cope with you know growing up and you know accepting themselves if you've ever felt like you don't fit in or like you've just been isolated your whole life or like you're trying to control things that you have no control over um, I definitely think that you will relate to at least one or more characters in this series um, because they're going through real life things they feel human although they have these extraordinary powers they feel very human you know they're trying to cope with childhood traumas and addiction and you know self esteem and self acceptance and I feel like they're very much grounded and they are very well rounded as well so I think that the show and its characters are very relatable wrap up and enjoy the ride from the beginning of the first episode it definitely sets a tone of the entire series as a whole 
It doesn't apologize for anything. It doesn't dumb anything down. It's just like, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. Strap up, let's roll, let's go. And as an audience member, you don't even question why they have a chimpanzee butler and a robot mom. Like you just don't question that because they're just so good at creating this universe just out of the gate and building up this environment of where these characters are. There's so much going on, but they expect you to put the pieces together as or along with these characters as they are putting the pieces together so it's not like you know hiding anything from you or dumbing down the characters either it's just like this is the information got it great let's go so um i really appreciate that as an audience member you know i want to be on the ride along with these characters and like I said, you don't even question why there's these other things going on because you're just like, yeah, that's the Umbrella Academy. Okay. <laughs> Hardly ever long monologues or exposition. Like I said, you're just with the characters going on through this mystery and figuring out why the apocalypse is in eight days and why or, or who causes it. So it's just a really good time. So great cinematography and effects. The cinematography, the CGI in the show is top notch. Like you can really tell that Netflix put a lot of money and a lot of talented people on this show because it really does show. And just off the top, Pogo, the chimpanzee butler it looks amazing he looks like he's actually there interacting with the rest of the characters it just looks amazing he's very well polished and i think the cgi artist who and the animators who are on this show just definitely killed it because he looks great and i think if i'm not mistaken it's the same people that did oscar in the planet of the apes series i do think it's the same people because it just looks amazing and like i said he looks so realistic and like i said it just looks like netflix just put a lot of money into the show because it looks extremely expensive the cinematography is amazing like you can definitely see the world around them the grittiness the, the dirtiness you know like the, the darkness and and it really does showcase what these characters are going through some more than others like i've noticed you know when klaus is in the scene it's super dirty it's it's gritty you know it's dark and I loved it. I think it really does set the tone. And like I said, just the entire house itself, like the sets are amazing too. But like just the way it looks, you know, the camera angles, you know, it just looks great. There's not a lot of Dutch angles or anything like that. And sometimes it looks like it's one whole, you know, scene and one camera motion. It just looks great. So uh, kudos to them. I think if you're really into CGI and cinematography, you're just going to love this show because it's very, very well put together and very well executed. Fight choreography and dance choreography. Okay, this show is, like I said, insane. Like, there's no other word to describe the show besides insane because it is crazy. But there is a fight choreography, especially with David Castaneda, who plays uh, Diego, number two, and Luther, number one, played by Tom Hopper. That fight scene when you know on the first episode insane very well put together there's not a lot of choppiness um you can clearly see the actors doing the stunts and it just looks like one wide frame you know it looks really really well really really good put together and they look like they're actually you know fighting like the choreography doesn't look choreographed it looks like it's really them just going at it so I really appreciate their stunts and, and the choreography because it looks great it really really does especially like I said with David Castaneda just the moment he is introduced that fight scene as well incredible um, just awesome and and anything he does in the series looks great but uh, especially his fight scenes I would say and and even towards the end when he um, also has a fight scene it's very very well executed him and mary j blige who plays cha-cha that's a very good scene a very good fighting a sequence so yeah even her you know her fighting at the end um really doesn't look choreographed like it looks like it's her you know and and, and it looks raw that's the word i want to go with it looks raw a lot of dancing actually um for some people it might take them out of the show uh, but for me personally, um, because I did dance growing up and I did dance in high school and I love ballroom dancing. I'm not good at it, but I love ballroom dancing. 
Um, I just loved the deaths in this show with um, Emmy and Tom. I think it looked great. And kudos to Ellen Page's wife who choreographed it. She did such a good job. Um, and like I said, for some people that dance sequence might take them out of the show. But for me personally, I think it just enhanced it. I think it it's such a cute dance and, and you definitely feel you know the same that they do you know it's it's the relationship with uh allison and luther it's kind of weird but that dance you know beautiful very well put together and then just the f first episode you know if you've seen the trailer to the umbrella academy you know that they dance and just every single character is so different and their dancing really does um reflect their inner personality you know you have allison who's just so sure of herself with every dance who she does she just on it and then you have Klaus who's very like whimsical when he dances and it just makes sense then you have Luther who's very awkward when he dances you know he's doing like the little crab just yeah he's awkward and you have Diego who's just on a beat on a fire and that's just how he is he's on fire he's feisty he's you know he's hot tempered and then you have Ellen Page's character, Vanya, who's so, you know, restricted in her dance moves, and that's just how she is in the show. She's very, um, very guarded, very to herself, so I really appreciated that. So I think the dancing in the show is great, and, you know, I, I think it's a risk that definitely, for me at least, paid off because I liked it. I didn't think it was something weird or out of the ordinary for the show. I really appreciate it. Dialogue, casting, humor, uh, very good. <laughs> Any shots, honestly, like this show is surprisingly very hilarious. Um, it's very dark, but it is very funny. And any scene that Robert Sheehan is in as Klaus, it's just he just cracks me up. Like, I don't know if it's Robert Sheehan being Robert Sheehan because he's just a funny individual. He's always eccentric and just you know beautiful and on the show Klaus is so eccentric and and you know like you can tell he's going through some dark times but he is just the most fun thing about this show like he's just fun he's just a funny character and yeah he's used for a lot of comedic uh purposes um but it's just amazing I don't know if it's his improv skills because Robert Sheehan is just funny in general but um or it's actually in the writing but either way it is very very good and very very funny i think all the other characters are written very well like i said in the beginning some characters have more going on than others and that is to be expected because of how huge the cast is like i personally personally think that they could have given Diego so David Castaneda a little bit more personality um because I loved him as a character I just felt like they were kind of holding off on him it could be because now they're filming the second season we might get more Diego but I personally feel like I didn't get a lot from him and same with um Allison played by Emmy Raver I think that's her name don't quote me but Emmy um, I think her character as Allison was great it just I didn't get a lot from her besides the fact that she has a daughter and she's a movie star um, but I wanted more depth more more insight into her personality um, but I think you know aside from that I think the rest of the characters are very well written especially Klaus like I said he has so much depth and and it's just so much going on he's such a layered character and then you have five who again has so much going on and such a layered character uh he's a 58 year old person stuck inside a 13 year old's body and um it's just fun to see him on there you know aiden gallagher did such a great job um just you know portraying someone super older than who he actually is um, and just he's just amazing on the on the show. So I think the casting is done very very well. Like I said, Robert Sheehan for Klaus, you know, amazing, you know, just great great choice for Klaus. And then you have Aiden Gallagher. Like I said, great great choice for Five, because I never realized or or it never like took me out of this show thinking oh you know Aiden Gallagher's like 14 15. You know it didn't take me out. I was like yeah that's a 58 year old dude. Like that's just 
he's just so good. Also, like I said, Mary J. Blige is great in the show. Um, she's like menacing, intimidating. She's such a boss ass bitch in the show. So I really, really, really respect her for taking this leap, you know? I know she hasn't done much acting, but I think Cha Cha was very well executed. And like I said, her fighting sequence is amazing on the show. Just her character overall is really, really great. And everyone just really seems to be having a good time. Um, and just, you know, I'm so excited for season two. I could have done uh, less uh, with one character, but I won't spoil it. I think one character is a little dull. Um, definitely, you know, pacing wise, it's not when, when they're on screen, the pacing just kind of slows down really, 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 really long. Um, but that's totally towards the middle episodes. But once you get through that, like I said, everything in the show has a payoff. So they reveal something and it just comes full circle towards the end. So um, you have to get through the episodes to get to that ending. That ending is very, very fun. Um, and yeah, there's a bowling alley scene that just pretty funny. The soundtrack. I haven't even talked about the soundtrack. My goodness, the soundtrack of the Umbrella Academy is just off the walls. It is so much fun. Um, they have Insta Istanbul, Constantinople. Uh, I think that's the name of the song. Really, really good. I think We're Alone Now by Tiffany. It's really, really good. Um, they have some Queen in there. And of course, Gerard Way's uh, song from the trailer. Uh, that's a really good song. And I'm happy that he got back with um, one of his guitarists to create that song because you can definitely tell that like my chemical romance vibe to that song is really really great um but yeah guys if you have not watched the umbrella academy on netflix i don't know what you're doing you definitely should go and watch it because it's really really fun and it's really really great i've told like everyone i know about the umbrella academy like you guys have to watch it watch it because it's so good and i am so ready for season two they already started filming so i cannot wait for next year and just to sit there and you know get that resolution because season one does end on a cliffhanger sad to say if you're like me and you want a show to completely end and to have an ending season one definitely does not have a ending ending like it ends but in a cliffhanger so i am excited for season two and yeah guys if you like this video if you want me back for more videos definitely give a like to this comment down below if you watched uh, the Umbrella Academy, who's your favorite character? Mine, I would say, is Klaus. Um, I think he's just amazing. And then I would say Diego. I think Diego, just like that, you know, tough exterior, but yet softness to him, I think it's great. But yeah, let me know down below if you guys want more reviews. I definitely will be reviewing the trilogy that is John Wick. Um, because I know that Keanu Reeves is everywhere and I love him so, so much. So, yeah. Till next time. Bye. Boop.